Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Louis Vuitton Neverfull MM in the monogram canvas. Uh, all right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's start your workout, let's go to work, whatever it is that you do, come join me, because not only do we have some awesome questions, but I also have loads and loads of eye candy for you this week, because I know I completely failed last week. So let's jump right into it, shall we? Uh, with the first question from Glam Gal 8622 I am a longtime Louis Vuitton monogram lover. I want to add some variety to my collection, though, so I'm branching out. I'm wanting the Speedy 30 Bandolier in Damia Ben. I just love the Damia Ben and the red interior. It just looks so pretty. Anyways, I own many small leather goods in monogram, and I was wondering if I have to worry about color transfer on them. Would the red get on the monogram canvas or on the Vaquetta? This is an awesome question, and because of eye candy, I know this is not the Bandolier, but again... We need some eye candy. <laughs> so this is a classic Speedy 30 and Damien Ban, and I agree with you 100%. That red interior, like I talked about last week, it just gets me every single time. I don't know if it's the contrast. I don't know if that it's maybe the compliment, um, you know, the that it complements the gold hardware so well. Who knows? But I agree with you. It's it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, print. Uh, now to answer your question, I personally have never had an issue with getting any type of color transfer on my monogram small leather goods. I brought these out again for a little bit more eye candy and uh, a better visual, uh, but I haven't had any issues on the canvas itself and I haven't had any issues with the leather, which really made me happy. I know I thought the same thing once upon a time uh, and I have actually been using these two items uh, along with the other small leather goods that I have in monogram in my Neverfull Damia Ben, uh, in my Alma Bibi and Damia Ben, and again, I haven't had any problems. Let me just show you the color that it has and uh, the color on the Vaquetta is actually because it started to Tina, but it doesn't have any type of pink. It doesn't have any hue from the red, uh, from the red interior or anything like that. Uh, so here you go. You can see that there's absolutely no red, no pink. And then I just thought that these two would be the best examples to show because they have a little tab of Vaquetta. Uh, there we go. And I know it keeps zooming in on my face. <laughs> uh, and again, I haven't experienced anything on the canvas itself. So I think you're pretty good to go. Uh, if any of you have ever experienced color transfer from your Damia Ben to your monogram small leather goods, let us know in the comment section down below. Um, not only these two items, like I said, that I've been using, but other small leather goods that I've had for many, many years, I've never had an issue with any type of color transfer. And, um, you know, like I said before, I kind of thought the same thing because it reminded me kind of of... Uh, of Demi Azor, and I know that might be a little bit weird, but Demi Azor is such a light print, and I and I figured the Vaquetta is so light, it has that stark, like that naked uh, leather color, that I figured, what if you end up getting color transfer? And like I said before, I haven't had any issues whatsoever. The only time I have seen any type of color transfer on Vaquetta itself, uh, I have seen some people, or I've actually I've had some people tell me that they've experienced it with um, with monogram bags, uh, like crossbody bags. I know some people have experienced it with speedy bandoliers. I haven't, um, not yet, um, because of how it lays when you use it crossbody. And if you end up wearing jeans, kind of like myself, it might end up getting color transfer on the leather itself. But other than that, uh, no, so I think you're I think you're pretty safe. But like I said before, I'd really like to hear uh, your guys' thoughts if you've had um, color transfer from your Damia Ben bags onto your monogram uh, small leather goods because I think this is an awesome, awesome question. So hopefully that was able to help. And if you end up getting the Speedy Thirty uh, Bandolier and Damia Ben, congratulations. All right, next question from B-O-L-I-C-H-K-A. I do not want to mispronounce your name, so my apologies. Uh, if you could only have one bag, one person, one pair of shoes for casual wear and for evening wear, six items, what would you pick and why? I absolutely love this question. And when I first read it, I thought that I was going to have a hard time. But much to my surprise, it was a lot easier than I expected. Uh, and I'm really curious to hear what you uh, think I'm going to say. Uh, okay, so let's start with the... Um, with the evening wear. If I had to pick one purse, it would probably have to be my Chanel medium large in the black caviar leather with the silver hardware. It's actually behind my jumbo. That's my jumbo there. So it's behind that one. Uh, that's the one that I would pick for evening wear. And for shoes, I thought like, I thought about, I don't know if it has to be something that is in my collection. If it has to be something that's in my collection, I would go for the Chanel ballerina flats because I think that they're, I think they're very classic and they go with anything. Uh, so, you know, that's perfect for evening wear. But if I had to say a pair of shoes that I don't have, 
I, that I don't have in my collection that I think would be amazing. They would be the Valentino Rock Stud pumps uh, in the <laughs> either in the black patent leather or the nude patent leather. I, I don't know what it is about those shoes. <laughs> I really I really need to just go buy them because I think they are gorgeous. Every time I see them on Instagram or I see them on people, I just think they look fantastic and they're really comfortable. So for things that I have in my collection, the medium large and the ballerina flats, and for things that I don't, the Valentino <laughs> rock stud pumps. Did I cheat? Is that cheating? Hopefully it's not because I really, really like them. <laughs> and I have them on my wish list, so it's kind of not cheating, but I don't know. Uh, and for casual wear, I would have to say it would be um, the Neverfull in the monogram canvas. I thought about doing the Demi Azor, um, but I think that for now it might end up being this guy, this bag, just because it's so incredibly easy to wear. It's, it just goes with everything and you all know how casual of a dresser I am. This is just for me like a staple item in my closet at any point in time and sometimes when I can't figure out which bag to wear, I end up going for the Neverfull if I want something more uh, more casual. Now when it comes to shoes, I think um, I think a lot of people might think that I'm going to go for espadrilles. Uh, I do love espadrilles. I am an espadrille addict. but. I would have to say when it comes to casual shoes, as much as I love luxury goods and as much as I appreciate them and I use them, for me, they will always have to be Vans. Vans for casual shoes. I These just describe me to a T. Uh, these are one of my newest pairs. I haven't really broken them in. I have another pair that's really beat up <laughs> and I didn't want to put that in the video, uh, but it would either have to be the authentic in the black and white or the all white because I do use these quite a bit. Um, they have a little bit of beauty marks, but what do you expect? They're bright white shoes, right? Uh, but for me, it would have to be Vans, 100%. I think they're so incredibly comfortable. Uh, I think I have now, sorry, I'm looking over here because that's where I have them all. I think I probably have maybe 20, 25 pairs of Vans just because I'm that crazy about them. I use them so much. So casual, never full monogram with a pair of Vans. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even, I, I thought about flip-flops, but no, I think the Vans. <laughs> uh, but great question, but hopefully that was able to uh, to help out or to give you a little bit of insight. Uh, all right, next question from Heather Wellborn. Does your mom or Robert's family members watch your videos? What do your family and friends think about your YouTube channel? Are any of them Lux lovers? Uh, great question. Does my mom... Does my mom or Robert's family members watch your videos? Uh, my mom does. My mom watches every single one of my videos. Uh, she is an awesome, awesome support system. Uh, and she'll tell me, hey, Minnie, sometimes you're rambling, sometimes this. And I love it because she gives me such great constructive criticism. Uh, and I mean, her opinion means the world to me. So the fact that she watches my videos, I think is, it's, it's just, it's awesome. You know what I mean? So mom, I know you're watching. <laughs> uh, and Robert's family members, uh, do they watch your videos? I don't think so. Uh, until maybe about a year and a half ago, maybe, or two years ago. No, maybe a little bit longer. They knew, they, they found out about YouTube, uh, but I don't think they do. Uh -uh. <laughs> uh, do your family and friends, uh, what do they think about your YouTube channel? Um, some of my friends don't really get it. They're just kind of like, that's, the, what <laughs> Someone said, that's so lame. <laughs> that's fine to each their own, you know. Um, but some of my friends don't really get it. Some of my friends are Lux lovers, not men not very many. Um, so it's really great to be able to come on here and talk to you guys because you know, you understand my love for these items and you get the craziness, you know. And um, sometimes when I talk, <laughs> when I talk certain people's ears off, I can tell that they're just so bored with hearing about it. So <laughs> again, the fact that I can come on here and, you know, talk to you guys makes it so much better. Um, and what does my family think about my YouTube channel? I think that they're, you know, I think they're really supportive. Um, my, not all my family watches my videos. Like I said, I think my mom is the one that just watches every single one that comes out. Uh, but I think that they're just like, if it makes you happy, then go for it. And, uh, they'll ask me, you know, how, you know, how's it going? Are you having fun? And yeah, I say, yeah, I'm having a great time, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so they're very, very, very supportive. So yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Next question from Alexandra, uh, Calderon. 
Uh, do you know if the Chanel GST is available to purchase in Europe or more specifically in Paris? I will be traveling there in a couple of weeks and I have my heart set on purchasing one if they're still available. Do you happen to know anything about this? Uh, this is a great question. And again, for um, some eye candy, here is the GST and the black caviar leather with the gold hardware. And I also have it there with the beige Claire and the silver hardware and the blue stickers. <laughs> Uh, but this is a fantastic question because when we were recently in London, I asked about the GST because I know that some people had said that it is still available in Europe. And when I asked the young lady in, uh, in Selfridges in London, she said that uh, they actually ended up pulling it off the shelves a year prior or six months prior. I think it was uh, in 2016. So according to her, she said that it's no longer available in London. As far as Paris, I'm not sure, uh, but it is a bummer. Hopefully um, some of the Paris boutiques still have them, uh, but I wouldn't be able to tell you with certainty. If any of you um, have recently traveled to Paris or if you live in Paris uh, or if you know any information, let us know in the comment section down below if you were able to get one uh, recently or if you know if they're completely discontinued. Because from what she was saying it sounded like they were completely discontinued um you know throughout europe but i don't know it was just it was i know that i asked her specifically in london so i don't know it, it just sounded like she was trying to say that they're completely discontinued all over so again if you guys have any information uh that you can you know bring to light let us know in the comment section down below but this is an awesome bag. This is my favorite GST. Um, so uh, hopefully they're not discontinued and hopefully you are able to get one uh, when you travel there. And if you and when you do travel, safe travels. And I hope you have a blast. Next question from Lux Purse Love. How has your Mon Mono Speedy held up? I'm really considering one. Great question. And here I have the Speedy 30 Mon Mono and I opted for the fuchsia with the, uh, with the white. Uh, and the pink is just very, very bright as you can see there. And the white, I know there's two different colors that you can choose from when it comes to white. One is a little bit more of an eggshell. It has like a uh, like a yellow hue to it. This one is more of like a bright white. It's almost like white out white, um, especially when you pair it up against the pink. When I first got it, it was just like it was it was very intense like it was a very intense white. But as I've used it with the wear and tear with the sun hitting it, it's really calm down a little bit more, if that makes any sense. Uh, so I'm really happy about that. I haven't had any issues with chipping on it. I haven't had any issues with um, with the paint yellowing or anything like that, again, with the sun hitting it. Uh, so I've been very, very fortunate because I'll be honest, when I first got the Mon Mono, I figured, what if it ends up chipping? Because it, it, because it does have the paint on top of it, it might be prone to happen. It's a characteristic that ends up, um, you know, that ends up happening to the bag over time. But uh, I haven't, you know, I haven't had any issues with it. So that makes me really happy. And I don't really baby the bag too much. The only time I'm very, I'm more careful with it, if you will, is when I'm wearing blue jeans. Um, especially if the jeans end up having quite a bit of dye in them. Uh, I try to be very careful as to how I end up wearing this bag, or sometimes I won't even use this if I have very, um, you know, very, very bright blue jeans because I know that if I get the color transfer from the jeans on the paint, it'll end up happening like that. It'll absorb it very, very quickly. Uh, so that's the only time I really baby it. Other than that, I just use it and I'm not, I mean, I'm not very careful with the vaquetta at all either. There's a little bit of staining going on <laughs> on the on the straps there. But I just, I love Mon Mono. I love the fact that you can personalize it to a certain extent. It still has Louis Vuitton's, uh, you know, you have to follow their, their, their guidelines, if you will. Uh, but I love the fact that you can pick the colors uh, that you choose. You can end up going for uh, adding your initials to it or just adding the strip or sometimes you'll end up having the the, the strip or the stripe over here. Um, and the best feature to me on a Mon Mono piece is the fact that you can also pick the color of the interior. And because I had the fuchsia, I went for the fuchsia interior. <laughs> it is just so bright. It kind of reminds me of the of the Speedy 30 and Damia Ben. It's just that, you know, it's it's very, very vibrant. And I love the way that it looks with the, with the white and the brown of the monogram. Uh, and the funny thing is, is that I kind of talked about this in my review video uh, that I did on this a million years ago. But the funny thing is, is that I was kind of contemplating between going with the, uh, with the cream, like the creamy white and the, 
the, what was it, like a maroon or it was like a brick, because I thought that those two colors would really complement the monogram canvas very, very well. I absolutely love it, uh, especially when the patina or when the leather starts to patina. I think that it would just really, the overall look would look amazing. But I opted for the pink because even though I would have gone with more of a classic, you know, type of combination, I wanted to live in the moment and I wanted, you know, I love pink. Not only do I love red, but I absolutely love pink and I lived in the moment and I wanted a bag that just described me to a T and this is it because it has that bright pink, it has that white and I just feel that every time I open it up, it makes my heart sing kind of like the Damia Ben. It's just, it's a really nice surprise, you know, like you unzip and it's like, ah, <laughs> it's pink. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm such a kook, I swear, but I love the way that you're able to personalize it. So I say go for it. I think it's amazing whether you go for the Neverfull, which is beautiful, or whether you go for the Speedy or any other Mon Mono piece. Uh, I absolutely think that they're worth it, uh, but great question. And hopefully that was able to help. Uh, all right, next question from Emma RC. I already have a Neverfull MM, the old one, but I want to get the Neverfull MM new model as a gift for my pregnancy. Do you think it is wise for me to do so? Uh, great question. So I don't know if you're, for example, I don't know what type of, did you say what kind? No, I don't know what, what print of Neverfull you have now, but if you already have, let's say, the monogram and you're thinking about getting the new monogram with the little uh, pochette, personally for me and the way that I am, um, I, I don't think I would do that, uh, only because I feel that, as far as my collection goes, I end up gravitating towards um, one, I, end, I will end up gravitating towards one type of that same kind of print. Like for example, with the Mon Mono, I did have the Speedy 35 in monogram canvas. Um, I knew that I wanted to go for the 30, but I decided to just go for the 30 in Mon Mono instead of adding both of them to my collection because they're still monogram and I knew that I would end up using one or the other. So that's kind of how I feel about the Neverfull. Um, again, this is just my own opinion. It's whatever makes your heart sing. If you absolutely want the new one and you like your old one, then by all means go for it. Uh, but I would maybe, if you wanted to add a little bit of variety, I would go for the new version in a different print because even though they're the same bag, as I've said in other videos, even though they're the same bags, by incorporating different prints, it just adds an overall different look to your to your outfit. You know, um, uh, a Damia Ben bag and a Damia Zor bag will just end up looking completely different when you end up wearing them. Uh, so that's what I would end up doing. If you want to add variety, go for a different print in the new model. Um, but it's all a matter of your personal preference. I will have to say that one of the things that I really love about the new uh, Neverfulls is the fact that they do come with this little pochette. Uh, now, I don't have, I did post this on Instagram a few days ago. Some of you were asking me if I got a new Neverfull. I didn't. I actually bought this last year um, from, from a client and you know what I love about these is the fact that they're very small yes they're a little bit thinner so you end up having I mean you can't end up carrying the kitchen sink in here but these are really great for grab and go you can use them as a little wristlet as a little clutch it really adds to the versatility of the new Neverfull so I absolutely appreciate that aspect about them uh, and another great thing is that some people that maybe let's say that you already have a Neverfull with the pouch and uh, you get another Neverfull a lot of people end up selling these and um, the great thing about that is that by selling this, you end up you can end up putting that money towards what you spent on the Neverfull, so it brings the price down even less. So I think it's genius, but I think these are amazing. Um, like I said, they add versatility to any collection. They add versatility to the bag itself, whether you used to carry it in the bag or not. But uh, I'm just a fan, and I opted for the. I ended up getting the rose ballerine with the demi -Zor. again because you guys know how much I love pink, <laughs> pink and Demi Zor. What am I saying? I just love the way that pink looks on, on Louis Vuitton. <laughs> so those are just my two cents, but definitely follow your hearts. Next question from Tasha Hartman. I currently am building my handbag collection, but I don't have special shelving in my closet for storage. I've been placing my bags back in the dust bag, usually folded back the way that it was when I purchased it. Will my bags lose shape or have creases or should they be stored stuffed if possible? This is an awesome question. And personally, my recommendation would be to always have your bag stuffed when not in use because it will definitely help it retain its shape a lot better. Uh, but you know, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a Louis Vuitton. It could be a Chanel, any type of handbag that you have. I always, um, I always, always advise to keep it stuffed because of the shape loss that you might experience. Uh, but also if you end up putting, uh, for example, the Speedy, the Speedy, whenever, um, we buy a Speedy, it's almost always kind of folded in. Uh, that's the way that it was designed. And that's actually the way that Louis Vuitton advises 
sizes for people to store. I disagree with that wholeheartedly because when it comes to the creases that the Speedy gets in specific, they are sometimes so incredibly hard to get rid of. Um, you know, and even when you stuff the bag over time, I feel that because of the creases, and it also depends on the type of environment that you live in, if you live somewhere where it's very humid, or uh, if the storage space that you have um, doesn't end up getting, or ends up getting a lot of moisture, or maybe it's a little too dry where you live, or anything like that. I feel that by storing it the way that it's supposed to be stored, according to Louis Vuitton, um, I feel that the creases might end up, cra might end up causing uh, cracks on the canvas. Um, I'm not saying that that's always the case by any means whatsoever, but I feel that the more and more that the bag ends up folding in the same exact areas, and again, with the same type of environment that you have, I feel that it'll be more prone to that. And of course, when it comes to cracking canvas, that's something that Louis Vuitton will not fix. Um, you know, you can you can go into the boutique, but they'll end up denying the, the repair because there's nothing that they can do with that versus, you know, something uh, on the leather or anything else that they might be able to fix. Uh, so I always advise to keep these uh, stuffed and uh, again, because of the, it'll end up holding its shape a lot better, and you won't have to worry about the creases because the creases and the and the speedy, like I said, are just a pain in the butt. <laughs> I know some people that have had their speedies for months, and uh, even with it stuffed, they still have the creases. The best way to get the creases, and I'm going to kill two birds with one stone um, on this question because I do get asked this question a lot too. How do you get rid of the creases? Uh, not only by stuffing the bag when not in use, but as you end up using it with the same weight that you create with the bag, uh, especially with the Speedy because it tends to sag, it'll end up going away. It'll end up going away a lot quicker. So uh, the sooner you end up using your bag, the sooner the creases will end up going away. That's just my uh, my experience with them, but absolutely 100% keep them stuffed. And uh, I'll go one step further, just in case I know that you didn't ask this, but um, I always advise people to make sure that they keep their bags in their dust bags, not back in the box. Because even if it is, even if it does have a small strip of leather, even if it's a mini pochette that has a small little tab, a pochette accessoire, or any type of bag, again, not necessarily Louis Vuitton, you wanna make sure that the bag is able to breathe if it has leather. Because uh, if you end up enclosing the the bag in a box, it won't be able to breathe. It'll end up wearing a lot, um, a lot. It'll end up wearing a lot differently than it should, uh, and it might cause the leather to dry out. So of course, you want to make sure that uh, the leather ends up breathing and that you don't have any issues like that. So keeping it stuffed in the dust bag out of the box is the best way that I recommend stuffing or uh, <laughs> storing any bag. I don't even know what the heck I'm saying anymore. I'm getting so tongue tied. <laughs> so hopefully that was able to help. My goodness. And uh, I do recommend the air pillows from Amazon. I know I talked about this in a few other videos, uh, but the air pillows, let me see which ones I have in here. Not this one, it's actually this one here. I ended up buying them, like I said, off Amazon. I think they were 17 bucks. 17, maybe 20 bucks, I don't remember. Uh, but they're like this. You can end up picking uh, the type of size that you want. But I end up going for these just because they're smaller so I can use a little bit more, I can use a little bit less, and I can put these in my smaller um, items if need be. But they come in this ginormous trash bag and they end up giving you more uh, than what you end up ordering for just in case uh, during transit they end up popping or anything like that. So hopefully that was able to help. I know that was a long-winded <laughs> answer, but you know me, I like to give as much information as I possibly can. <laughs> and the last question from Junior Saudi 2. If you had to pick between the Louis Vuitton Pochette Matisse and the Chanel Rectangular Mini, which one would you choose? Why can't we just have them all? Laughing out loud. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you 100%. Why do we have to choose? Um, but for more eye candy, I do have uh, two Chanel minis. This is the caviar, the black caviar with the light gold hardware. And here we have the Pouchette Matisse in the monogram canvas. Uh, all right, so both of these bags... I absolutely love. Um, they are, I mean, they're incredibly different. This one is a little bit uh, dressier. This one, um, you know, it's it's a great little bag to transition from day to night as well if you're only carrying the essentials. But this bad boy, I mean, this bag can carry so incredibly much. It's a lot more casual than this one is. Uh, and I love the fact that I don't have to downsize as much when it comes to the Pouchette Matisse. I can carry more of my daily essentials uh, than I would with this one. With this one, um, you know, kind of like what I said with other uh, Going Compact videos, you have to, I have to personally think twice about what it is that I'm gonna carry. I have to make sure that it's something that I, um, that I absolutely need because I wanna be able to maximize the space 
inside of this little bag. Uh, this is uh, eight inches in length, so it still fits quite a bit of items, a lot more than you would think, uh, but it's still, I mean, it's not, it's not the world's biggest bag, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but there is the interior of it versus the Pouchette Matisse. I mean, <laughs> this fits a lot more, a lot, lot more. Very, very casual. So between the two, I love both bags for different reasons. Uh, I use both bags for different reasons. But if I had to pick between one or the other, man, <laughs> why? Why do I have to pick? Uh, I think I'd probably have to say the Pouchette Matisse, absolutely. Just because the ease of using this bag, the fact that I don't have to think too much about what it is that I'm gonna carry in here. I do have to downsize a tiny, tiny bit, uh, but not so much as this one. But this one I could also wear crossbody. I can, I feel like it's a little bit more versatile. Yes, this one is versatile, but just nowhere near as versatile as the Pouchette Matisse is. So between the two, they're both fantastic. They're both great to add to any collection at any point in time, but ding, ding, ding. <laughs> this is the winner for sure. And I think I've been saying that ever since I've had the Pouchette Matisse. I am, I'm so giddy when it comes to, to that bag just because I just enjoy using it so much more. Not saying that I don't enjoy this one. I'm not saying that at all, but the Pouchette Matisse is just spot on. <laughs> so hopefully that was able to help. Uh, all right, you guys. So that does it for Minx Monday q and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope I was able to answer your questions and I hope you liked the eye candy. And I definitely, I think I, I think I brought it this week. I think I brought it with the eye candy because I felt so bad when I rewatched the video when I was editing it last week. I was just thinking where... Really? I don't even t I don't even show anything what's going on. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Now for this week's lineup, I have my May favorites. I almost forgot what month it was. And for Wednesday, I've been debating about doing a Mod Shots video uh, for my handbag collection. I talked about it actually when I did my handbag collection a few months back. Uh, I said that I was going to do a Mod Shot video. Um, so that's, I, I'm kind of leaning towards that, but I might end up switching it up completely. Who knows? Uh, but hopefully you guys um, enjoyed the video. As I said, if you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on that red button down below and hitting that bell. Uh, but thank you again, and I will see you all tomorrow. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.